Hi YouTube, it's time for a live uh, showing of what I can actually do when it comes to you know painting these cards and to do so I'm doing it with a uh, actual project I've been wanting to do for a while and um, it's magic related rather than Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I've been wanting to try proving that you don't need a stack of cash in order to get some of the better cards. You can use skill. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm doing a project called Pauper to Power where I take something cheap uh, paint it up and then trade it on an online forum or you know through YouTube or to people I know in order to get something worth more than its original value without the paint job and then go from there. Well, you will have to excuse the you know as I'm as I am painting sometimes the uh, the card goes off screen a little bit but you know that's um, all part of it I'm afraid um, but yeah I always say I'm also doing this to show you exactly what sorts of things I do uh, I'm using uh, Games Workshop paint and paint brushes, so you know if you're wanting to do this yourself, then I would recommend those. Though you want to water them down so that you get layers on them. I did mention this in my previous video, which was uh, showing you some of the work I had done previously, which there'll be a link to right now. Uh, so go and check that out if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, so I mean, currently I'm just building up layers at the moment. Um, you know, darker layers should always come first because it's a lot easier to um, let that dry and then put something on top of it and then go from there. I mean, this is a this is a basic land from uh, the Ugin's Fate pack. You know, this is a, this isn't actually normally in the set. Um, it's an alternate version of this planes um, that's uh, time shifted. So I thought I, I managed to get one of each of these basic lands. So I thought that a really good way to get started would be to, uh, you know, do these up and do them as a panorama. And then that would get me a really nice jump start. So the edges on this particular car will be relatively rough, um, but that is intentional. As long as the center, like as long as the color blending um, from the edges of the card to the main picture itself is correct, that's all I'm really bothered about in this particular case. As when I get um, the mountain and the island or uh, whatever play, uh, whatever lands I decide to use uh, next to it, then obviously elements from those lands will be brought into this. But I have to start somewhere, so I've gone with the planes to try and sort of you know because it's quite a simple you know. It's not monotone, it's actually got quite a lot of colours in it. There's a lot of blues, reds, uh, yellows, and you know, it uses brown obviously quite a lot in the base. But going from that, you can see where it all comes from, and then you can go either side of it. Uh, around the corners of the edges, I've used a mixture of blue, a slight tint of red, and a ochre colour to sort of get like that sort of dirty sky look that they've got going on there. I intend for the island to come off from this side, so while the um, the very edge of it is going to match the colour that's there now, um, once I get the island painted up and bring it over to the side then there'll be more blue present in the picture. Yeah, I mean the whole reason for me to do this is again so that I can prove that you don't necessarily have to have stacks of cash in order to get some of these really big cards. I, I mean, I've, I've been very lucky and you know, my collection for cards is quite big, but I work in a card shop, it's gonna be like that, you know, and you know, I can show people these kinds of things so that they have hope that they can do it themselves. I've known loads of people to paint playmats, um, oh yeah, playmats, you've got uh, cards themselves, I've seen sort of entire decks altered that are gorgeous. Like some of some of the arts I've seen are absolutely stunning. Like way better than anything I could do. Um, I'm not bad, I, I, but I am, I'm not on the same level as some of these guys. Um, there's Facebook groups and everything for particularly magic cards. Yu-Gi-Oh is a very very niche thing. There's very few people that do that. Um, so I will definitely be showing off more of that in uh, times to come. But I, knew, I know that magic magic altars have a real following, so we're going to go with that first. And it's uh, probably the best thing I can use to prove the monetary factor. Um, it helps that magic's painted cards are usually tournament legal. I mean, it depends on the judge that you're talking to at the time, but more often than not, they allow it. I mean, I've watched on Star City Vintage and Legacy tournaments, um, you know, where they've there was a high tide deck I remember seeing there. All of the high tides were painted because, you know, there's a lot of older cards that can't be 
you know, foil because the foil cards weren't around at the time. So people have them painted or altered instead. And you know, hopefully I shall get to a point where I've done this so often that I can quite happily spout off a Jace the Mind Sculptor or a, you know, revised jewel. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite confident enough to, to tackle those cards yet. I mean, I've done some relatively expensive ones, like I did uh, Bramar's King of Oroskos when, um, when he first came out, and he was about sort of 20 to 25 pounds when he was first released. So, I mean, even that was fairly intimidating, but once you can get over that, then your confidence builds up. Um, so, yeah, I go from that. But going back to the card here, uh, you can see that now that there's a first primary layer on there, um, it's quite rough, as I said, you know, but it needs to be. You're not going to get it right like the whole time. As long as the colour matching matches up with what's on the card already, then that's what matters. Um, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit lumpy, I suppose, if you're very, uh, if you're not very careful. You know, you, you have to. You, this is why you have to really thin your paint down. Um, I think I made a mistake uh, somewhere on this card earlier by accidentally putting my finger on some of the paint, which doesn't help. But I, I mean, I've, I've covered my tracks. You know, I, I've managed to do well with it. But it's, you know, it's quite important to make sure you don't do that. Um, I use, I mean, I could be using masking tape to tape this down so that it's kept in place, but because it's borderless, if I were using, a, if I were doing a Yu-Gi-Oh card, then I would, you know, then I would use masking tape to just tape down the edges so that you don't go into the black borders of the card. Um, however, with Magic, I don't want the black borders of the card, I want this to be a panoramic view of five lands, so it's just one big thing. Um, so therefore, I, I don't really care about the black borders at this point, so I'm not using a, um, any masking tape on this, but I would use just low tack. You know, make sure it's as low tack as you can find it because you don't want half the card coming up with it when you take it off. Um, I do, however, use a toothpick um, very lightly, very, very lightly because you don't want to scratch the card. Just to take, as long as the paint is quite new, you can take off sort of the top layers of it just so that you can just refine the edges on sort of where you do want the border to be. Um, there's also various different methods of um, altering cards like this. Like, I mean, I've done it where I've left the text box and the the name or the title box intact. However, I've seen a lot of people who paint straight over where you can see the cream of the um, uh, of the text boxes and just leave and just have literally just planes and that and the title's text box left on its own, or you can just do the whole thing and leave just the sun of the plane symbol in there. There's tons you can do. When it comes to alters, you know, your, your, creation, your creative juices have to kind of flow and you just do whatever you think is good for you. Or whatever, if, if in my case, because I'm aiming to trade some of these away, um, you know, what you think other people will want. But, uh, yeah, I was saying, you know, we're continuing to get on with the uh, I think we're coming fairly close to the end of this, but uh, yeah, I, I, really, I really hope that you know this this does sort of start to get me somewhere. I mean, I'm I'm fairly sure that I can at least work my way up a fair amount, but I've just got to keep going and keep trying and get up there. But I really, really love to. I you know I'd really love it if I could share it with everybody. And you know, if you've got comments or anything, you think I've been crap, or you think that you know there's something that you would suggest, you know, constructive criticism or anything like that, then feel free to leave comments in the video. Um, or you can now actually tweet me, um, Joseph uh, on Twitter, uh, I'm on Instagram now. You know, you can, you can find me on all these places. So if you have anything to say, let rip. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big boy, I can take it. Um, if you do, on the other hand, if you like what you're seeing and stuff like that, then, you know, follow what I'm doing. And yeah, just leave us a like and a subscribe. Share it with all your friends, because you know it's all about getting the word out with these things. And there you go. And I'm almost done with this particular one, getting a little signature on there just to make sure that no one, you know, this is my original art, do not steal. And there you have it, you know. I think there's a couple of little bits I just do to tweak this a lot, but as I said, the edges are very slightly rough because the colour will change once the other two land on either side of it. But hopefully now you've seen what sort of things I'm I'm able to do, and you know I'm quite I'm quite confident in my colour matching skills. Um, you also have to remember that with the video, the light is uh, slightly off due to. Um, 
because there's a light shining on it and paint's wet. But there you have it, one finished card. And then I'll just sort of leave you with the picture of the card itself. So yeah, I mean, hope you enjoyed what you saw and there's plenty more where that came from. So join in next time and I'll see you all later.